It's true. I'm finally living in Japan. And uh, it feels really good to say that. So let's have a little bit of story time on how I got here and uh, also how I've set up this apartment because I've been documenting the process. Um, it's still a work in progress, but uh, I'm very happy to be living here. And yes, I am living in Osaka. This is a city that has well and truly adopted me and I absolutely love it here. So finding an apartment in Japan. Uh, I must admit, I was pretty scared about this idea because um, trying to find somewhere where you don't really speak the language, but I've been fortunate that I've actually made quite a few connections whilst I've been here in Osaka. Um, and uh, funnily enough, one of the people that I connected with uh, happened to be a real estate agent. <laughs> I've also connected over the fact that we both play golf. We've been out for rounds and other stuff. Kiyoshi has become a good friend of mine. He made a promise to me at the very start. He was like, I'm gonna help you find an apartment. And so that personal connection has been incredibly helpful at finding this apartment. Now the process itself was pretty difficult. It was also incredibly rapid. This all happened in the space of about three weeks or so. In the middle of that, I had a trip to Iceland. So <laughs> it all happened fairly fast, but I think if you're on it and if you're really prepared and you put in the research and the dedication to your time, it can happen quickly and swiftly. Now, I should also mention that as part of this journey, and it's almost like a rite of passage for every foreigner who comes to live in Japan, I did apply for one apartment that was amazing. It was such a great apartment and I got declined for it, quite literally, um, and quoting the words, because I am gaijin. So gaijin just means foreigner. And um, yes, it's a thing that happens a lot in Japan. I feel like there are so many people who talk about it on YouTube. Um, there is just discrimination and profiling that happens purely based on who you are, where you're from. You know, it's not good, obviously. The good news is I was able to continue searching for an apartment and I found another place that I think is actually far better and in a better location as well. And applying for that was super swift and breezy and uh, yeah, ended up here. When it came to going through the contracts and the paperwork and things, there was a moment where <laughs> there was this lawyer involved and he was quite literally, and I, I mean literally, reading out a contract, eight or nine pages back and front, word for word. In full Japanese, and this is full legal Japanese. My Japanese understanding is fairly limited anyway. Legal side, absolutely no chance. So I'm sat there just like, I, I don't I don't understand. I have no idea what you're saying and I'm trying to translate it back. Like, it doesn't matter, I'll sign it. I don't, I don't understand. It was a good few hours or so going through this. I was like, oh wow, okay. <laughs> but um, in the end, it was kind of a case of just close your eyes, hope for the best, sign your life away and uh, ended up with this apartment. And yeah, the, uh, the other shocking factor to this is the move-in fees in Japan astronomical. I was aware they were going to be high. It still shocked me and it still made me gulp when I saw the few thousands or so that were involved in uh, just moving in. One of which is just a gift to the landlord to say thank you for making this apartment available to move into. So let's now jump back in time to my journey of populating this place with all of the items, because I literally had to start from zero. And this apartment didn't even have light fittings in the ceiling, let alone a fridge, a freezer, and other stuff. So I needed, quite literally, everything. This is all very exciting. Uh, but this one, that is a mattress, believe it or not. Let's uh, unravel it. And so over the last few months or so, I've been popping into different stores and just seeing all sorts of things. Um, most frequently, of course, I've been going to Muji and you know, we have Muji in the UK and the rest of the world as well. But in Japan, the selection, the furniture, so much is just a better option at, again, a fraction of the cost because it's from Japan. It feels like they should sponsor the channel at this rate because I've bought so much stuff from them. So Muji, if you're watching, uh, I would love to collaborate. It just hits the sweet spot on good quality products, good design that's kind of fairly plain, but still leaning Japanese and just very functional um, and at a good price. So every day has kind of felt a little bit like Christmas because yeah, I've had to start from zero. I have no idea what that is. 
Another day, another delivery. Welcome to the future. Spent quite a lot of time researching different vacuums. Didn't want to spend too much, but also didn't want to buy twice. And this one looks pretty good. Perfect for a small little flat. I know what you've all been thinking so far. What brand of hair dryer did I buy? Well, of course, <laughs> I've got my own Panasonic Ionity. Uh, as you know from my Twitter and now my threads, every single hotel that I stay in in Japan and pretty much Asia, to be honest, has one of these style of hair dryers. I find it fascinating. I think it's hilarious. Um, and you know what? They're actually really good hair dryers. So <laughs> I've gone and got myself one uh, in matte black, of course. Whoopa! Ah, she blows, literally. Very happy with this. I've realized that I'm actually very good at shopping. <laughs> Once I start spending, I can't stop. Oh man, literally everything. I need everything. Today's fun unboxing is, uh, is something that I've been wanting to open for a long, long time. I'm talking years. So I've been on another little shopping haul of kitchen delights. Uh, this time, Nitori, which is like, I guess it's like the equivalent of like Japanese Ikea, I guess. Like it's kind of, yeah, like they do everything for the home. But just, you know, chopsticks, all sorts of things. I can't even remember what that is. Um, but in this box, in this very box, is a part of Japanese culture that I have loved for a long, long time. I'm talking fluffy. I'm talking soft. Squidgy. I finally got myself a Japanese steam bake toaster oven. I've wanted one of these for years, but they're never, they're never in the UK and they have the wrong power supply. Now I'm in the right land. So I guess you've probably seen all over Instagram uh, the Balmuda Toaster Pro, I think it's called. Um, I was keen for that for a long time, but then I came across this, which is the Bruno. Uh, different brand, but slightly bigger, and I think just overall looks a little bit more functional. Um, but it's still in matte black, and I love it. So the cool thing about toasters in Japan is rather than your typical like slot-loading toaster, they open like an oven. You can see it cooking. You can cook it to perfection, but you can also add water to generate steam, which gets that nice fluffy bread. Honestly, there's a culture here about good fluffy bread. Now I'm a member and I'm very happy. Holy shit, look at that. Yeah. Now that is toast. I've realized I've, uh... <laughs> I've taken on a lot of stress in a fairly short amount of time. I think the last like week or maybe two weeks or I don't really know how long it's taken to, to process everything of getting this apartment. There's lots of communication happening. And I've realized that one of the biggest things that is just kind of intensely frustrating, but I'm having a lot of patience with, is the fact that I'm illiterate here. I... <laughs> <laughs> I can speak some Japanese. Uh, it's improved dramatically over the last year, but um, it's still very much minimal. But reading, absolutely, I, I just, I don't really know very much. I know maybe like half of one of the character sets. And so the thing that's just really like struck me recently is I can't look at a document or an email or a message or a notification or something and just at a glance know what it is or who it's from. I have to highlight the whole thing, translate it. Um, and when I've got emails from utility companies, from warranties and all sorts of other accounts that I've had to set up in the last week and then emails and projects, and they're all just plain text documents. It's overwhelming. Maybe if you're in the same situation, just know that it's, uh, yeah, it happens and hopefully there'll come a point where uh, I'll be able to look at it and be like, ah, at a glance, I know what this is. Hey. 
Yeah. I'm a big fan of this handle. This is good. Whoa. I am really, really loving this new apartment. Uh, I've been here just over a week now, and I've been kind of settling in and setting stuff up. I have a, I have a, a principle in mind, which is uh, I'd much rather buy good quality stuff and take my time doing it than rush into things and just get cheap stuff that I'm gonna replace and just go to waste and whatever. So all of these items I'm thinking of uh, and that I'm getting here, I'm thinking of them as like lifetime purchases and I'm um, just gonna, just kind of work it out as it goes. There's a load of stuff that I've left in London, which is actually gonna be shipped over to Japan uh, sometime next year. I need to work out how best to do that. Um, I've got a few quotes from some companies, but I'm just a little bit a little bit unsure at the moment. Um, yeah, I've got wildly different pricing. Um, so yeah, unsure what the best method is, but I'm researching. One area that I'm, I'm quite enjoying setting up, which has actually surprised me, is the kitchen area. So I'm, I'm not really much of a cook. Um, I enjoy eating really good food, but realistically, um, I rarely am able to dedicate a, a good amount of time into cooking stuff, um, especially not every day. Uh, if I can batch make things and do that for like, um, you know, a few days worth of food, then great. But every day, that's uh, it's a little bit troublesome for me. However, I really enjoy good kitchenware. Um, so I'm enjoying setting up this space and uh, I'm actually thinking of maybe getting like a, a second counter or something because later next year I'm desperate to get myself an espresso machine again. So my last one that I had in London uh, for four or five years or so, um, I'll be upgrading from that. That will be going to a new home uh, for someone else to begin their coffee journey. And uh, I'm researching some new coffee machines, some new espresso machines and grinders as well. Um, <laughs> Funnily enough, it was actually my top priority, but uh, I've had to I've had to put my smart brain on and say, don't spend all your money on the coffee machine because you need everything else first. Um, and that's what I've been saying. Up. But anyway, I just had a couple of deliveries and I want to show you uh, what I've been thinking about because I've <laughs> put a lot of research into this. It's a very basic item, um, but I think uh, hopefully it's quite smart. So as you can see, kitchen areas in Japan are pretty small. This one is actually kind of large by Japan standards, um, but realistically, I only have this one surface area to uh, prepare my food, to leave dishes that need washing and other stuff. So I've got a, a second little shelf here that just raises things up, just gives me an extra surface. I can put some you know, readily used ingredients or, or whatever. Um, but the question I have is where do I, where do I dry things? So at the moment, I've been washing up and I'm just drying my stuff here. Um, but that's not really that great. I got this for pots and pans so that I can just put wet pans up and they can just immediately just drip and dry into the sink. Um, so that saves time. But yeah, I was thinking, how do I, how do I dry this? Um, so there are these like dryers you can get that are pretty large that go over the sink, but they just look really messy. Um, and I was thinking, can I utilize this area and find something specific, the right size that just fits? And then I discovered this, fit perfectly, over there. This draining board will send everything out the middle. It doesn't take up too much space. Uh, everything's gonna drip off into the middle, into the sink. And we've got this that I can maximize glasses for. So I bought myself a new knife and I love it so much. Um, so I wanted to put some time into sort of thinking, you know, different options. I didn't want to spend too much, but also didn't want to go like too cheap. Uh, I love the style of this. I love the weight of it. Um, and uh, yeah, I think I may get the remaining set. So this is from a company called Sekimagoroku. And um, yeah, they, uh, they have some great knives. Uh, they also had one with a Damascus pattern, uh, but I didn't like the handle on that one too much. I prefer the handle on this one, and I love the shine, so yeah. Uh, but anyway, I want to maintain my knives well, so I finally got myself a whetstone. Um, so this is a, a whetstone, um, so I can sharpen my knives, and uh, yeah, I've only ever done this one or two times before. Uh, the first time was when I actually made a knife. Um, as part of the Made in Japan project. 
Uh, that knife will be coming to Japan um, sometime next year. It's currently in storage. Um, but I need another knife in the meantime. So yeah, this is all about how you sharpen your knives. Um, different grit, different levels. Ooh, nice and weighty. Variety of different options. Little knife guard, perfect. Okay, so before I get my espresso machine, uh, I'm gonna be using drip coffee, a uh, bit cheaper, and I bought this kettle. This was actually in the Black Friday sale. Um, I haven't done a huge amount of research on it. It was a little bit impulsive, but I've since researched afterwards and I think it looks good. Uh, but I'll tell you what does look good. Look at this light, this light in the apartment. Oh man, I am loving that. Look at that shadow, that's like the classic, uh, it's like when flat design first came out and everyone was doing those weird drop shadows on interface design. This is good. I was gonna make a cup of tea and then, uh, then I realized I don't have any mugs yet. <laughs> so I can just test that the kettle works. Um, I'll make a tea later. But it looks good. So one of the first purchases I actually made was this TV, which is an OLED TV from Panasonic. It's a 55 inch, it's a size that I'd been looking for. Yes! So this, I think, is gonna go there. I was very close to actually getting an LG OLED. I went to Yodabashi and I, you know, was going back and forth between different TVs over a number of weeks eventually ready to pull the trigger on this LG one. However, <laughs> I saw this Panasonic one next to the LG and it was a direct comparison that I could see and I was blown away. Now I've always enjoyed Panasonic cameras for their technical picture quality. I think they're incredibly accurate. I think they are just a very true representation without adding too much, I guess, drama or like flavor to the picture. I think they are a true representation of what the filmmaker wanted. When I think of that with the cameras and I apply that same logic to the TVs, it is absolutely 100% true. Looking at the picture on the Panasonic OLED versus the LG and even the Sony's, I was like, wow, that Panasonic looks very good. Very, very good. And I just couldn't stop comparing everything by this point to the Panasonic. And so I ended up going for this one because it was quite honestly the best image that I was looking at. So this is uh, the Panasonic 55 MZ1800, uh, something like that. Um, there's so many letters involved in these types of products. This is, I think, maybe the final thing-ish that's needed to make this living area feel kind of complete. Uh, obviously there's like lots of little things I could get like side tables and stuff, but if having a TV on the floor doesn't say I've just moved in, I don't know what does, but uh, let's finally get that TV lifted off the ground. I love it. I'm so, so, so happy with this. So I actually spent quite a long time trying to find the right TV bench. It's surprising how difficult it's been to find something um, for a couple of reasons. One, I wanted to match with what I've got with the sofa and the coffee table um, in the sense of color and like quality of wood. And if you've got 
two bits of wood that are kind of close but not close enough i feel like it's just it just doesn't quite work if you're going to make it different you've got to really enhance the contrast and make it totally different uh, and then second is this is like solid hardwood um i don't want to match that and likewise this oled tv is you know it's an expensive product um i'm not going to put it on something cheap and flimsy and just sort of devalue the whole look of it so that's why it's taken me a while <laughs> it's actually taken me a long time um and i've had the tv on the floor for a, a few weeks now um but now it's finally up and i'm so happy with it this particular one i found it uh it was like a um i guess like a carpenter's sort of company uh actually not too far from here in osaka on rakuten which is kind of like the equivalent of like Amazon, I guess, in terms of like sale. Uh, it's an absolutely chaotic website. It's so difficult to navigate. Um, but there was uh, a promotion that they were running. So I actually got it kind of about a third off um, what the uh, original retail price was. So yeah, I'm, I'm super happy with it. It's super solid, looks great, it's functional. It's gonna keep any devices that I've got in there um, organized. I can slide open the door so they're not gonna overheat. Um, yeah, plenty of space for my fat boy PS5, which is going to be arriving uh, when I ship stuff next year, and uh, hopefully a new amp as well, because um, I want to bring over my surround sound, but I'm going to be upgrading my amp, because the one that I've been using is like 12, 15 years old, um, and will have the wrong power supply and just all sorts of other things that can't be changed, unfortunately. So uh, yeah, looking forward to finalizing that, but otherwise... This living space, uh, I feel like I'm talking really fast now, but this living space is finally coming together. I'm really excited for it. All that's left is to work on this big office space behind me. And I am so excited for that, but that's gonna be in future videos. Um, all sorts of plans. But uh, yeah, there's a few other things I'm gonna set up, but otherwise, feeling good. So an interesting thing here, um, actually two things. I just mentioned about contrast with the wood. Uh, I think I wanna change these covers just to increase uh, some contrast between the covers. Um, but a fun thing here is I've actually run an HDMI cable from the TV through the back of the sofa into here. So if I need to sit here on my laptop, um, I can just plug in my uh, MacBook Pro, just boom, HDMI there, um, or maybe camera or something else. And um, yeah, it's gonna show up on the TV right in front of me. Uh, super tidy, you can barely see it. And um, just tucks in like that under the rug. And adding to the TV, one of my favorite Apple products is the Apple TV. So I've got the Apple TV 4K. Um, they happened to update the remote recently, so now that charges USB-C, which is a bit of a bonus. It's just such a great experience to browse through entertainment. I know TVs are smart these days with apps and all sorts, but when you compare it to the experience of using Apple TV and the configuration that you can do with it, Honestly, I don't think anything beats it. It's a bit of a difficult one to explain to other people of why it's such a good product, or even just the naming of it is difficult to explain because there's Apple TV, there's Apple TV app, and then there's Apple TV Plus, which is the subscription service. Um, and it's just, it's a bit of a mess. Um, but the actual device, the Apple TV 4K, uh, is a great little box of joy, and uh, I love it so much. You know, it's been over a year since I've had access to my PS5 and I really miss gaming. <laughs> now that I'm set up with like a living space, a good TV and other things, um, I just want to play some games every now and then and I'm not going to be able to get my PS5 uh, until, you know, a few months or so into this year when I go back to London, ship some things and it's going to take time for that to arrive. And it even crossed my mind whether to buy a new one and then when I go back to the UK, sell my old one, because they've just released the slim PS5. Um, yeah, it crossed my mind for a hot minute, but I decided, no, that's just silly. Let's just be patient and let's, let's wait. But in the meantime, I remembered this. Uh, this is the backbone, uh, I guess, handheld rig system for your smartphone. Came out a few years ago. But I was always holding off buying it because I knew that there were rumors of an iPhone having USB-C at some point. And I didn't want to get one that had lightning and then it just be out of date within a year or so if I upgraded my iPhone. Fast forward three years and USB-C finally came to the iPhone. And uh, I got the iPhone 15 Pro Max. And I remembered this. And this will just fit around my iPhone and I can play good iPhone games because from what I gathered, they've gotten pretty good in uh, the last five years or so. Um, but also, I can emulate uh, older games 
And when I eventually do get my PS5, I'll be able to do the remote play setup uh, when I'm traveling and all sorts. And uh, I got a little case for it as well, because, you know, keep things protected. So this is it. Uh, it's just a little controller device. And what you do is you take your phone, put in USB-C, and now with this active, I think I can just press this button and boom, yeah. Taken straight into Backbone app. Uh, and I can play all sorts of games. If you've got a Netflix subscription, you can get the new GTA remasters, I believe. Uh, or at least that's just come up. Feels really good. Feels like an actual games console. I would love PlayStation to make a PSP or a PS Vita again, like a, a new version of it. One that actually supports local play, not just the remote play. I know there's that new device, I can't remember what it's called. Just, just want some like games lately. And I think this is gonna scratch that itch. It feels solid, looks really good. And of course the screen on the iPhone is a fairly comfortable size, great quality. Uh, let's just hope the battery life isn't uh, drained too much because this controller uses the battery from the phone. I've got USB-C pass through if I want, but um, yeah, I got some games finally. I should note, by the way, that I will be linking to some of the notable products in the description below. Uh, those links will be affiliated to me, but there'll be no extra cost to you. So they just help support the channel and keep things active. And uh, I appreciate your support. Another way of making this feel more homely was adding some plants and nature and, you know, just a bit of greenery. Um, so I went to a, uh, a plant store and uh, I will definitely be going back as well because I've, uh, I, I want to fill this place with plants. I love having house plants. Um, so I've got a couple to start with. Really enjoying the aesthetic that they're adding to the space and this apartment gets so much natural light. Um, yeah, I'm so happy with it. It's, yeah, I, I'm just, I'm in love with this place. I'm, I'm really loving it. I'm so happy. This is kind of a different video to what I, I normally produce on the channel, but you know what? I'm actually really keen to do more sort of lifestyle things. Um, and I guess like the lifestyle of a creative as a photographer, a filmmaker, and just sort of share more of the behind the scenes and the living in Japan, because it's something that I'm intensely fascinated by and I've got a lot to talk about and share. Um, and it's a wildly different life to what a lot of other people have had. It's different to what I grew up with and other things. And so there's just interesting aspects there. Likewise with the apartment and the, the home sort of style and things, you know, it's, it's kind of been a blessing and a curse for me that my background is in design and creativity because, you know, in, in many ways I keep saying this, like I'm a bit of a design wanker. You know, I look at the functionality of something on, you know, so many ways that something will be used. I obviously look at the aesthetic of it. There are so many boxes that need to be ticked before I actually make the purchase on something. And so that does make purchases very difficult, but it does also mean that I think I've ended up with, you know, a curation of items that I, I think work really well for me and uh, hopefully they would be good recommendations for you as well. So I want to share those. Um, and uh, yeah, I think there's a lot that transcends between like the living space as well as the working space. And I will absolutely be doing an office build up and run through and desk setup and other things. Um, I'm so glad to finally be getting a desk back. And uh, yeah, I will be sharing that on this channel. You guys love them on my YouTube. I've done multiple desk setups in the past, but I'm excited to have a new version for 2024 um, in Japan. So yeah, there's a lot coming and uh, I hope you're excited for it. Let me know what you think in the comments below. So yeah, that wraps it for this one. All right, matane, bye bye. Mm. Spatula. Sorry, I don't speak Italian. <laughs>